My name is Michael Beatty. I'm the president of Beatty Development Group, and I want to thank everybody for being here at Harbor Point. But I would like to welcome every one of you, and especially Mayor Stephanie Rawlings Blake, our Council President Jack Young, Daryl Doan, and Brenda McKenzie from BDC, Baltimore Building Trades President Rod Easter, and Maryland Minority, uh, Maryland Washington Minority Company President Wayne Frazier. Although he can't be joining us today, I also want to thank our councilman, Jim Kraft, for his hard work to create jobs on what is now an empty, dusty site, but will before long be Baltimore's newest neighborhood, with thousands of residents, public parks, and businesses. Our mayor is right. Baltimore has to grow to succeed, and Harbor Point will be the most visible evidence of what Baltimore can grow and what can happen. This is a site that Jim Rouse, the late Jim Rouse, called the greatest development site on the East Coast. As the mayor and the council president will mention, our public-private partnership to build public infrastructure on the site will create thousands of jobs, attract new neighbors, and many, many, many new businesses. One of the unique things about this project, or the, about the facts of it, is it's not speculation. This project is real, but it also has a great history, and the history, you just have to look next door to Harbor East that we started 20 years ago. That project is real, it's happened, and when you look at that project, the facts speak for themselves. It's created 16,000 construction jobs and 10,000 permanent jobs. Harbor Point, just like Harbor East before it, will create tremendous opportunities for local and minority-owned businesses. And thank you, Wayne, for helping us get inclusion right and doing a better and better job with our neighbors. We also really want to appreciate and thank the Living Classroom Foundation and Humanum for our work and the leadership of our council president to really maximize local hiring on this project. And I think we'll actually set new boundaries on that. The Exelon building will be built with union labor with Baltimore Building Trades. And I want to thank Rod for everything he has done to really make that happen, but to be a true partner, not only for this project, but long term. And I think that's really one of the incredible things about this project that I've seen, is the things we can do together when people focus on more than just one project they focus on the future of a development and the future of their city. But Harbor East next door also generates about $38 million a year in city tax revenue every year, year in, year out, to support our schools, our public safety, and our other priorities. Harbor Point will also be a project that dramatically pays off for our city. Finally, I just want to reiterate how great it is that Baltimore as a mayor is focused like a laser on growing our city, which makes other great things happen. That's what this is really all about, is growing Baltimore. Creating opportunities, creating more tax revenue, building buildings, building residents here. This project will have thousands of new residents on it and will help grow Baltimore. This project will have hundreds of new businesses, both small and large. It'll be the home for parks, promenades, but it will create opportunity and it will grow Baltimore. And there's no one better to lead that charge than our mayor, Stephanie Rawlings Blake. And it's my pleasure to introduce her now. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much, uh, Michael, for the kind introduction. And thank you, I want to thank you and your team for believing in Baltimore and joining the cause and the, the effort. Uh, and I, I think, thank you for taking up the charge. You know, I can, I can certainly make the challenge, but I have to have partners who are willing to take up the charge to get Baltimore growing again, and I, I want to thank you for that. I want to thank uh, City Council President Jack Young for being a partner uh, with me as I strive to grow Baltimore and to create jobs. I want to thank uh, Councilman Kraft, who has worked very hard uh, making sure that this project moves forward, uh, even though he is not able to be here today. I want to thank Brenda McKenzie, President of BDC, as well as um, staff. Uh, Kim Clark is here as well as Daryl Joan. Thank you for all of your, your hard work on this project. Uh, although she's not here with us today, I do want to thank uh, Karen Sitnik, um, the Director of the Mayor's Office of Employment Development, who's worked tirelessly with this developer and others uh, to ensure that the, that the projects that happen in Baltimore benefit Baltimore residents and that we're providing the trained workforce to be ready to meet the, the needs of local employers. And I want to uh, thank Sharon Pinder, uh, 
with the mayor's office of uh, minority and women owned businesses uh, she has worked uh, incredibly hard and has lent uh, the, the credibility of her years of experience in this area to, to make sure that uh, everyone who's doing business with Baltimore knows that we are looking out for and looking for a way to create opportunities for minority and women owned businesses so Sharon I want to thank you for uh, your leadership. I also want to thank Rod Easter, the president of Baltimore's Bid Building and Construction Trades. Um, yeah, anytime that we, we get to share a podium, it means that Baltimore is growing, so I appreciate Rod for being here. And, and Wayne Frazier, president of the Maryland uh, Washington Minority Contractors Association. Uh, he's a, he, you know, I, 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 I'm grateful to be able to lean on his expertise. Uh, he was, um, uh, you know, was present at um, the um, announcement of the work that we're doing, uh, a new day, uh, the, the the way that we're um, planning uh, and and um, mapping out the future for minority and women-owned businesses, and I'm I'm uh, grateful for his support again uh, today. Over my shoulder is Harbor Place, a place recognized uh, nationally and throughout the world as one of the crown jewels jewels of Baltimore. It's funny if if you uh, run across someone who hasn't been to Baltimore in a while, they'll, they'll ask, you know, how's Baltimore, I mean, how's Harbor Place, you know, like it's a living, breathing thing, like that is a temperature for, uh, you know, how Baltimore is doing. And, and we have to understand all of these things as our assets and, and value them as such. It's also a place that uh, ba most Baltimoreans take great pride in uh, for, uh, for good reason. Not only is it a beautiful space, but it's been a, uh, the primary driver for our local tourism ho and hosp uh, hospitality industry for years, helping to create thousands of jobs and generate millions in tax revenue to support the city. But more than three and a half decades ago, its very existence was uncertain. The visionary developer that Michael referenced, uh, Jim Rouse, stepped forward with a plan to revitalize the heart of Baltimore's waterfront through a unique public-private partnership that required significant city support. Mayor William Donald Schaefer embraced the idea and made it a priority, knowing it was a project that would make Baltimore stronger. There was much skepticism. There was anger. There was distrust. I remember the uh, referendum. I'm sure you remember too, Council President. You know, with the with the ballot initiatives, and you had to vote yes on one and no on the other in order to get it right. And even as a kid, I knew it was important, uh, not just for that initiative, but important for Baltimore. Um, but in the end, the idea of progress and growth won the day, and Baltimore is now better for it. Two years after the project was approved, the night that Harbor Place opened to national acclaim, a mayoral aide privately uh, complimented Mayor Schaefer on what everyone hailed as a remarkable achievement. Mayor Schaefer responded by saying, Harbor Place, that's old news. What's, what are we doing next? He understood that Baltimore's future comes one day at a time, and each day brings new challenges to overcome and new opportunities to embrace and drive forward a future to shape and make our own, and that's what we are doing here today. In order to grow, we need to constantly seek ways to reinvent Baltimore for the future, building on our own strengths. So I ask, what's next for Baltimore? Harbor, Place is a new, Harbor Point is a new $1 billion master plan mixed-use community that will support thousands of construction jobs as well as permanent jobs and generate on average nearly $20 million in new city tax revenue annually. On Monday, after careful independent study and analysis, we introduced the public infrastructure financing legislation to support this project. We did it because like the Inner Harbor revitalization effort of 30 years ago, this project represents a once in a generation opportunity to grow Baltimore by attracting new jobs, new residents, new tax revenue, and new public amenities for all residents to enjoy. Built in phases, the New Harbor Point community will include significant new public infrastructure, including several new public parks and open space, including a 4.5 acre waterfront park, excuse me, a new waterfront promenade, which will finally connect the Inner Harbor to Bells Point, Canton, and other neighborhoods that I used 
over the over the uh, weekend as a selling point to a Connecticut uh, businessman whose wife is determined to uh, get him to move to Baltimore. So I, I told him about our promenade and he, as an active, um, you know, as an active gentleman, and his wife is uh, very active as well uh, into fitness. That was a selling point for them. Um, it will also include a new bridge and a public road to help approve uh, vehicular as well as pedestrian traffic. All of these will complement privately uh, financed buildings, including new office towers, retail shops, residences, as well as hotel rooms. Now let me take a moment to outline the specific benefits. The project will support a significant number of jobs. According to MuniCap Inc., the city's independent financial advisor, these include more than 7,000 construction jobs, 6,600 permanent jobs, and 2,500 2, indirect jobs. The Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business is working with the developer on an inclusion strategy to comply with the city's Minority and Women Business Enterprise Program. And the Mayor's Office of Employment Development is working to develop a local hiring plan to ensure that Baltimore City residents will have maximum opportunity to obtain employment. Excuse me, this is important to me. I know it is important to the City Council President and uh, members of the Council. The Harbor Point neighborhood will house approximately 2,000 residents, many of whom will be new to the city. Prior to development, the site has generated only about $250,000 in property taxes annually. After the development, Harbor Point will collect an average of about $20 million per year in new tax revenue. Make no mistake, this is a significant amount of new tax revenue that will support our budgets for police, for, for fire, for public education, and for core city services. In total, Harbor Point is expected to generate more than a half billion dollars in net new tax revenue over the next 30 years. The project will include a total of 9.5 acres of new public parkland, providing enhanced access to the city's waterfront for all of our residents. More than a third of the site is devoted to public parks and open spaces. It's easy to imagine that in just a few years, thousands of city families will be able to enjoy an accessible, new, spectacular park on the water. Right here to my right, it will, be, it will belong to the people, another point of civic pride for Baltimore. The public infrastructure financing will, en will enhance and expand uh, existing public charter school, the crosswords, crossroads right over there. Uh, and the living uh, classroom campus. Uh, finally, and that, let's not forget the challenge of building on this particular site, which was formerly home to a chromium processing plant. This project will reclaim a former industrial brownfield site for mixed use development and eliminate a significant piece of vacant property from the city's beautiful waterfront. It will be a national model for brownfi brownfield redevelopment. So for all of these reasons, I'm fully supporting this important investment in Baltimore's future. I want to encourage my colleagues in government and in the broader business community and our neighborhoods to do the same. Harbor Point is good for Baltimore. It's good for all of Baltimore. And I look forward to working with the City Council to move this important revitalization effort forward. I'm very confident that just like Harbor Place, we will be able to look back at this project together and know that it made Baltimore better and stronger. Now I would like to introduce my uh, partner in growing Baltimore, the City Council President, Jack Young. Thank you, Madam Mayor. First, I'd like to say good morning to everyone. And I was excited and I'm still ex I'm still excited about this project. I, asked, I, I had talked to the mayor and said, when is the bills coming? Because I'm looking at the jobs that this project is going to bring. Uh, most of you know I introduced a bill calling for 51% of all new jobs to be Baltimore City residents. And I, I want to make this very clear. I'm not saying that other people cannot get these jobs. I'm saying out of 10, give us six. And I spoke to Michael Beatty and his group and fully told them what my expectations were of this project. And they agreed that this is something that should happen. They didn't say, hey, I didn't like that legislation, it's, it's unconstitutional. They said, we're willing to work with you. And I'm excited about that, Michael, and I'm gonna hold you to that commitment. And I'm gonna tell you, if 
you have Wayne Frazier standing here. <laughs> Something must be right about this project because Wayne is not going to support a project that's not going to have minority participation as a part of the development. And then you have my good friend, Mr. Rod Easter. That means union jobs. That means careers. That means jobs even after this project is built that people are going to get pro uh, jobs within the uh, project area. I'm excited about this project, and Madam Mayor, I am your partner on this, and I will do all that I can do to make sure that this project moves forward, because all I want to see is jobs, jobs, jobs. When you look at the Inner Harbor, you look at all of this down Harbor East, if you come down here any time during the week, any time on the weekends, it's booming with people who are spending money. And when you spend money in these restaurants and in these stores, you're paying, prop you're paying taxes that's going to come into the city's uh, coffers. So I'm excited about this project. I just want them to start digging the dirt up and start the building so that we can get our union workers and people in this city ready to work so they can support their families. I look forward to moving this project forward. There you go. Thank you very much, Councilman. You know, we we have, in our time on the council, had some very interesting uh, interesting votes. And I, I think back to the time when we had to consider uh, the, um, the, the Marriott. And I remember, you know, they, they're, um, God, so did I. And I said that there are, I, I would like to hope that there won't be many times that I'm on the, the wrong side of history. Um, but, but, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty, And at the time I was so, I, I, I wanted to support our convention center and tourism. And I thought that the best way to do that was to have a, a hotel right near the convention center. I didn't, I could not, you know, if, if you are from Baltimore and knew what this was before all of this, I just couldn't see it. Uh, but how proud and glad I am to be proven so wrong uh, that that this project is here. I've been a tremendous, you know, since that time, I've been a tremendous supporter of uh, Harbor uh, East and now Harbor Point, and I know now what to look for as opportunities for a transformational project, and this is it. Uh, and I'm also pleased uh, that when it comes time to using business and economic development as uh, transformation tools for a city, that I have a president of BDC like Brenda McKenzie that understands that uh, Baltimore has so much untapped potential and uh, believes, as I do, that Baltimore's best days are ahead. And she is a full partner in making that happen. So I'd like to introduce Brenda McKenzie. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you all for coming here. This is really a glorious day. I mean, to be a magnet for jobs, a magnet for growth, we as a world-class city have to be competitive and have to be competitive on a, in a global economy. Investing in the infrastructure that supports new opportunities in terms of space, space with expanded foot plates or foot, uh, floor plates like we're talking here, helps Baltimore attract office and retail tenants looking for something different, decidedly modern in scope. You know, when you get down to it, it's really about choices, providing diverse market options that bolster our competitiveness, attracting both new jobs and residents to the city. Uh, this project will certainly further the mayor's goal of attracting 10,000 new residents and families to the city. Uh, with a dynamic mix of uses, Harbor Point offers a range of opportunities in terms of jobs at various levels and housing. If there's one thing that I've learned over the years, it's that growing cities need to be bold. To invest in the infrastructure that really supports growth and private investment, it's no doubt that's what we need to do. People and businesses have choices of where they invest and where they choose to grow. It's simply our challenge and today is our opportunity to continue to enhance our position as a city, our position on this global stage. By leveraging this opportunity today, we can really encourage private in investment, the job creation here at Harbor Point. And that's exactly what we're doing. Expanding market options, business opportunities, jobs for our growing city and our economy. I have to tell you, at BDC, there's probably not one person at our agency that hasn't touched this project. 
And that's really what we're all about. Not only growing our opportunities here, but throughout the city. So I thank you and look forward to seeing you at many more events like this. And now I'd like to bring up Sharon Pender. Uh, she is always looking for new ways to engage our uh, business community to, to expand opportunities for minority and women-owned business. I'm very, very proud of the work uh, that she has done and that we have done uh, under her leadership. And I'm, I'm looking forward to uh, more projects to come. Sharon? Thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm very grateful that we have at the helm of this great city transformational leaders. So thank you, Madam Mayor and Mr. President, for all the work that you do. And ladies and gentlemen, the mayor has been very clear to those of us on her team the importance of supply diversity and inclusion. We look at the Minority Women-Owned Business Development Program as the cornerstone of inclusion, but that's, it's much more than that. Traditionally, when we talk about leveling the playing field and ensuring that minorities and women have a piece of the pie, the focus has always been on the public sector, government spend. That's great, but the mayor has set the bar high and we understand the true value of the future of minority business participation is inclusion in the private sector. Those commercial dollars represent a larger part of the contracting pie. With the vision of Mr. Beatty, the Harbor Point Project is an awesome opportunity. Working with my office, the Mayor's Office of Minority and Women-Owned Business Development, we are devising an inclusion strategy to ensure we maximize on including city-certified women and minority businesses in a meaningful way. The strategy is an extension of the recommendations from our recent report, A New Day, A Better Way. There are so many reasons why this project is so very important. You've heard it from our leaders this morning. It is the catalyst and model for inclusion of private sector projects in the future. As we prepare for meaningful inclusion, the mayor has made sure that we have all the stakeholders at the table. Organizations such as our, such as our chambers, our Hispanic Baltimore Black Chambers, um, et cetera, the, the Maryland Minority Contractors, the Maryland DC Minority Supplier Diversity Council, the Maryland Washington um, contracting companies and others have a voice. And here this morning is one of our strategic partners, Mr. Wayne Frazier, CEO. I just want to start out this morning showing you my most popular position. It stands for strength. As Rocky Balboa did back in the day, Baltimore is now doing today. This project represents the largest opportunity ever in the city of Baltimore to create wealth and economic opportunity. I want to thank Madam Mayor, Council President Young for their support, and Madam Mayor, I'll forgive you for that vote back in the 90s. <laughs> but the vision is here. Jack voted against it. No, oh, I, 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 I feel the hill. Oh, oh, oh. it all comes one. out now. I voted for this one. <laughs> but ladies and gentlemen, I grew up in Baltimore. And back in the 60s, I used to crab and fish around here. And some of the crabs were like the biggest <laughs> ones in the world. And to see the transformation of Baltimore from then to now is just outstanding. Council President, you indicated that you're going to support this legislation. Uh, Sharon Pender, you indicated that the mayor is going to, uh, you and the mayor are going to come up with the best inclusion policy. However, I just want to offer just a little advice, and that is when this bill comes out of city council, we should have total inclusion for women and minority businesses. Number one, equity in this project. It can be written in to the legislation. That creates wealth for women and minority businesses. Number two, in any area that the developer, ultimate owners of the property, that they procure, any area, property management, uh, maintenance services, uh, this is beyond construction, that there should be women and minority business inclusion. It can happen. Baltimore is the model city for this. And I recommend also that we seek 
a total inclusion of 37 percent, 25 percent MBE and 12 percent for women. I met with uh, Mr. Beatty uh, and he agreed with all of it. Is that true? That's right. Historical. It's never happened in Baltimore, my hometown, my beloved the city before. And that's why I'm proud and minority business, women business, we support this. I'd like to introduce another longtime Baltimore guy. I went to Murrow Votech and he went to Carver Votech, I believe. <laughs> city. City? Oh, city. Forgive me. East side, west side. The point is, is that he has made a career in supporting labor and building trades. And it's my honor to introduce Mr. Rod Easter, president of the Baltimore Building Trades. East side, west side, which one is it? Good morning. Uh, uh, let me first say I'm a city knight. I went to city college. This morning is, is, is special to me because it seems like it's all coming together. But first, I want to thank the mayor and the city council president for their support of this and, and thank Michael Beatty for his commitment to, to the project and, and thank everybody who's, who's been a part of, of this coming to this point. Uh, about two years ago, I visited uh, Exelon and, and we talked about this potential project and uh, we had a vision, but we didn't know it was going to take all of this uh, into the pot to make it happen. And, and finally, we're here. Um, and I look at a site today that's just barren, but I had the vision about hearing the whistles blowing, the steel swinging, the concrete being poured, the hammers, the drill motors, uh, guys driving in going to work, paychecks, families being whole again, uh, city residents getting opportunities and new careers, new families moving into the city. There's a whole lot of potential here on this site that's just barren today. But it won't happen unless the city council comes together and makes sure that we have the money to get it done. You can't build bricks without straw. And you can't produce jobs without the revenue to make it happen. So I asked the city council to stand along with the mayor and, and, and see the vision that all the people behind me see and make sure that this happens and bring this project to light in Baltimore. I thank you all for coming out. Thank you very much, Madam Mayor. Is there anyone else? I guess that's all. Thank you all for coming. <laughs> have a good day. Thank you. All right. I think we have a time. We have time for a few questions. Mm -hmm. Yes, I have a question for Mr. Beatty. I wondered if you could please itemize the hundred and seven million dollars you need exactly. How much you need for certain items to show why you need so much? Mm. I, I don't have off the top of my head all the details sitting in front of me, but basically. The project is being funded by a TIF, and the TIF is funding the infrastructure, so the normal public improvements that you would see built by a city. So what's included in there, this is a 30-acre site, and one thing you can do is you can compare and contrast it to Harbor East next door. Harbor East back in the early, late 80s, 90s, had about $20 million worth of streets. But really, the majority of the site was buildings. There's no public open space. The open space was the promenade and really considered the waterfront. This site, um, the vast majority of the site is open space, so there's a lot more area to cover. So it includes, as our mayor said, about nine acres of park space that's in there. That is, the, that is a large portion of the infrastructure cost. It includes the promenade that wraps all the way around the outside of the site that is also a large portion. It includes a bridge connecting from Central Avenue across that will not only support this project, but it will make traffic much easier in the entire area because it will actually, along with the city's efforts to improve Central Avenue, it will improve the flow and direct people up Central Avenue. It includes millions of dollars going into a school, which I think nobody can say isn't just a fantastic investment into our city and into our youth in the city. Which school? The Crossroads Academy, next door. Uh, Living Classroom Foundation, next door. 
So, um, and it also includes basically the overall site work of bringing utilities to the site. So each one of them is a large amount and it is a substantial amount of money and they will be built over time. But the parks, the promenades and utilities are the expense. The other thing that is a challenge but is a good thing for the city is that this site, as was pointed out, was a brownfield. This is the kind of site that the private sector may have ran away from and said, let's put up a fence and hide from it. That would be depriving the city of Baltimore and also our residents from, a, from not only park space, but revenue generation and job generation. So this is the perfect example of private company, Honeywell International, the old Allied Signal, stepping up and spending over $110 million to clean up a site privately and get it back to the point where it was ready for redevelopment. It's an example of private companies coming in and putting their headquarters here like Morgan Stanley and Exelon that are moving thousands of jobs here. Morgan Stanley, as an example, 68% of their workforce are Baltimore City residents. So it's that type of effort, and it is a big expense, but to create this, that'll really create the opportunity in the future. Is there any way you could have done this without the city? It's not feasible. I mean, considering all the, you know, saying it's a billion dollar project, you could have financed it yeah. yourself. No, it, it, there's no, you know, it's hard enough, and it still will be hard. And again, I'll point this out very clearly. Harbor East um, is a project that I think people can say it had subsidies, it was a challenge back and forth, should it have had or not, but I think the vast majority of folks that look at it now look at it and say clearly this is a project that has been a good thing for Baltimore. We had Aniban Basu do an independent study that showed there was millions and millions of dollars of tax revenue coming out of that project. The difference on Harbor East is that Harbor East, most of the subsidies went into the buildings themselves. They went into the private sector real estate to make sure that the rents that could be attained were enough to pay, which they weren't, so it needed subsidies in the building. At Harbor Point, um, when people ask the question, when is the time that subsidies end, what, what is there? the reality is that the TIF is going into infrastructure. We still need to privately finance the buildings, and I will tell you, it's not easy, and it won't be easy going forward. It'll be challenging. We'll have to get private sector investment to come in, private sector debt side to come in to finance the buildings privately, and that'll be the vast majority of the investment, and no, it would not happen without city support. Mr. Beatty, uh, what is the ownership interest on the uh, Harbor Road Point? Um, the project right now is, is currently owned 100% by me. 100%? No, John has been and his family have been a fantastic partner and friend of mine for decades. And they have made a tremendous investment in the city of Baltimore building the Harbor East project collectively that I worked on for the last 20 years. Um, at this point in time, they, they have made a huge investment in that and now I'm going forward and working on with the partnership of our city and with partnerships of lots of people to help participate on the project to take this next venture forward myself. Last question, please. What are you going to do if the TIF doesn't get approved? If the TIF doesn't get approved, what we see here today is what we will see for a long period of time, unfortunately, because without infrastructure here, we can't build buildings. As I said, you know, when you look around the city of Baltimore, there are some really good sites that are sitting there that have roads to them. There are really good sites that have utilities there and have infrastructure and parking garages next door, and they're not built because it takes a huge amount of infrastructure costs and it takes a huge amount of private sector money to build just the building. So without that infrastructure, it will not be built here. It'll Why look like a parking lot. Why is the city going into debt for? I mean, couldn't the city pay this over well, a period of time? I mean, why it, do you need this? So if, if you look at the private sector and why would the private sector ever go into debt for anything, the private sector goes into debt because it's a good investment. And that's what runs our economy. The city took a very thoughtful and long, long approach on this project to analyze what is the investment we're making and what's the payoff. Harbor East is a great example. There was a big investment in the infrastructure. There was a huge investment in the buildings publicly on, on whether it was pilots and things but it paid off. This site will do the same thing. It will pay off, and I believe our city has done that. I think our city council will continue to do it. BDC and the staff has done that independently to look at a project and say, is this worth our dollars? And I think what you will see is that these projects that have large density, have large buildings, they pay huge amount of taxes and create huge opportunity. So the spin-off effect from this project will not only be here on site, it'll be in the surrounding areas. And one last thing I would point out is that at Harbor East, Harbor East was a very small project that geographically, there are a lot of buildings around the area that were created because of Harbor East, that other entrepreneurs came in and built buildings, built retail, built other apartment buildings down here. And it's spin off, and that's what really gets our city. And it gets back to exactly what the mayor, our city council president, BDC have said, it's all about growing Baltimore. We need a bigger city, more taxpayers, more residents here, 
that's what's going to make it successful. I, I feel, I, I listened to the, myself this morning, and I was a little tired this morning, and I am invigorated by our city council president, our mayor, and everybody behind me that's excited. This is a fantastic opportunity that'll tra for, for myself, but it's a fantastic opportunity for our city and a lot of other people, and I really thank you. All of these advantages are going to come regardless of how the city pays for the infrastructure, whether they go into debt order. Or well, they, they, they won't come if the project is not built. They will not come if it's not so built. You're saying if the TIF doesn't go through, you're just not going to build anything. That is correct. It will not happen. Where's that clock going to locate the headquarters if they don't? That's, that, maybe they'll keep it in Chicago. I don't know. But right now, we have a commitment with Exelon. They're a great company. They made a fantastic commitment to Baltimore to put a new headquarters here. Um, we're excited to move that project forward and bring those thousands of jobs here in the construction side and the long-term side. But without this infrastructure, we cannot build that building. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.